Hi, my name is Joe. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Most of the time on this channel, what I do is I review martial arts books. In this particular case, I'd like to do something a little bit different. There's a channel that I subscribe to. I like it, so I'm, I'm not going to mention it by name because I don't, I don't want to give the impression that I'm, you know, trying to rag on them and cause beef or anything like that. Recently, this instructor put out a YouTube video talking about the, the position known as the pincedor in Kizi fighting method and pointed out, quite rightly, that from this position you have limited offensive options with your upper body tools. You are extremely vulnerable in the midsection. You could be stabbed. You could be in a self-defense situation. You are subject to being kicked in any kind of uh, stand-up sparring. And if somebody is trying to shoot in for a takedown or a body lock, again, you're extremely vulnerable from that position. And I agree with all that. I think where I sort of diverge from the message he was sending out is that this position does have its uses. I think an issue we have in martial arts a lot of times is that we see a technique in isolation without really putting it in its proper context and instead take it for whatever context we're looking for. In this case, this type of shelling up, covering up, um, it's used to cover and crash. It's not used for sparring. You're not gonna like, you know, touch gloves with a guy, walk back 20 feet, and then come out like, let's have a boxing match. You know, unless you're Winky Wright, he sort of did that a little bit. So the purpose of this move is for like rapid self-defense scenarios. So I'm in conversation range with someone. I'm, I'm in the interview stage, I've got my fence up and he makes an aggressive move toward me. So we're talking like, you know, three or four feet away or less. And he comes in and I don't have time to go from here to here. So instead I go here and I cover up and a part of this is also to sort of hunch over, which you lower your center of gravity, you're harder to knock over. It's harder to knock somebody off balance that way. And you do help to extend the shell to some of your more vulnerable midsection targets. So there are several variations of this. I'm not going to cover them all now. If somebody wants me to analyze all the various covers and flinch responses, I'm kind of interested in doing that. Um, we'll see, but the point I'm trying to make here is that this is meant for a very specific situation and it's not meant for, you know, are you talking to me? You know, that's not what it's designed for. This is the purpose of this maneuver. And I don't think that this particular instructor was educated by people who use this on a regular basis, or maybe he saw somebody using it in an improper context that's just as realistic. There's a lot of stuff out there on the internet. Maybe somebody saw it as like, I'm gonna fight like this from now on. So these types of shilling up positions do have their place. Um, you actually, there are some related things that can be used in a um, competitive scenario. We got Archie Moore with a so-called crab or armadillo defense. He shelled up here. He protected his midsection by lowering his center and this was an extremely close range technique. You know, he's not being kicked and if anyone tried to get around his guard to throw body punches, they were going to be met with punches from him. 
Um, another quasi example might be South African martial arts instructor Rodney King, who has what he calls the crazy monkey defense, but that it doesn't stay here. You know, it works from an on guard position, do get into the hunchback position so that, again, your elbows are sort of coming down to protect your liver, your solar plexus. And when someone throws a shot, you cover up long enough to defend that shot. And that's really just a snapshot. My understanding is based on watching some of his YouTube videos. I have his first instructional. Maybe I'm not giving the exact way that he's teaching it these days. But my understanding of how it was being taught in the early 2000s was, again, this almost peekaboo-ish style. And when someone throws a punch, you cover, you cover. But then there are multiple ranges and multiple responses, so that's not the only thing that you do. So that's not really this sort of, you know, in Kizi fighting method, it's called a pincador type of position, you know, or any of these other variations. But it's an idea that has made its way into some combat sports type areas. So with all that being said, summarize, some stuff looks dumb. I think it's our job as martial artists to take a critical look at everything that we come across, but at the same time, part of that is examining what the exponents of things that might look a little sketchy at first glance are actually saying, you know, this is what we actually use it for, this is the context in which this technique is designed to work. So, in the future, I'm certainly going to try to do that, and I hope that we as martial artists collectively will also seek to get a bigger understanding of what other styles, other instructors are doing that make us scratch our heads at first. Thank you for your time. Please like and subscribe if you like what I'm putting out.